Electric bicycles and mopeds are rarely seen in North America, but they are an essential part of everyday life in China, especially for people with low and middle incomes. On August seventh, numerous videos were posted online showing people taking to the streets in Shaoyang City, Hunan Province, to protest against the authorities' ban on electric vehicles. Some local people have told the public that there were thousands of people protesting, with a number of them being arrested. Angry citizens blocked government vehicles, and even traffic police were chased along by many protesters. News of the mass riots in Shaoyang was censored on mainline social media, but a large number of videos made its way to overseas Twitter. The Shaoyang protest was sparked from a three-month campaign launched by the Shaoyang Public Security Bureau in July to rectify quote the chronic and persistent traffic problems of electric vehicles, that is, motorcycles and electric bikes, which include mopeds, can only be used in the city if they meet a set of specific requirements. It is also strictly prohibited to park and use electric bikes or mopeds, unlicensed electrical pedicab, four-wheeled bicycles, and motorcycles that do not have city license plates. According to preliminary results of the official meeting, 354 e-bikes were seized from July 4th to 8th alone. Officially, there are six mandatory technical parameters for electric bikes. Where more than 95% of the 54,000 electric bikes in the city are categorized as oversized, this means that most of these bikes will not be able to travel on the street and cannot be used. A statement was also circulated on the internet about the Shaoyang People's Petition against the city government's ban on e-bikes, which challenged the authorities' move to ban e-bikes and made a number of public demands. According to the statement, Shaoyang's public transportation network is not perfect, and some citizens are willing to choose electric vehicles because they are economical, environmentally friendly, easy to use, and highly efficient, and are suitable for low and middle income family. Electric bikes take up only one fourth to one sixth of the road compared to cars, while their overall efficiency is about four times higher. The citizens blame that the officials' ban on electric bikes does not help relieve the overall traffic pressure in Shaoyang City. The statement accused the Shaoyang authorities of being inhumane in dealing with electric bikes that do not meet the standard. Officials did not give advance notice of the deadline for registration of the license plate and did not extend the registration deadline. Many people have purchased oversized e-bikes that are now useless. The citizens also put forward a series of demands, such as reopen the electric vehicle licensing registry, allow electric vehicles without city license plates to enter the city, simplify the licensing procedures, where the government cannot ask the public to provide some unavailable documents as a requirement for a license, increase the number of licensing verification registries, return the electric vehicles seized in August. Processing time for violations and vehicle impoundment should not exceed three days, and many more. It is rumored that the Shaoyang authorities were horrified by such a large-scale action taken by the public, and in order to quell the public outrage, they urgently announced the release of the electric bikes. The screenshot of a WeChat group chat shows that the secretary of the Shaoyang Municipal Committee of Political and Legal Affairs. Claimed that from tomorrow onwards, all county brand electric vehicles can temporarily travel downtown and will not be impounded, and the impounded vehicles will be released in order. A netizen's message on August seventh said that the authorities have begun to release the impounded electric vehicles and are conducting door-to-door -door registration of citizens' electrical bikes. In fact, the ban on electric bikes and mopeds have long been in place in many cities in mainland China, including big cities such as Fuzhou, Haikou, Guangzhou, and Shenzhen. Videos of traffic police forcibly confiscating people's electric bikes have also previously surfaced online. Some local governments are even using this as a way to generate revenue, where the traffic police would confiscate a person's vehicle and then sell them secretly.
A girl bought a new electric bike, and when she just walked out of the store, ready to go home, she met a group of police. The girl said, "I just bought it and have not even charged it. I didn't even go on the road." In many of China's cities, the public transportation system is inadequate and difficult to meet people's needs. People have to look for alternative means of travel. For low and middle income groups who cannot afford cars, they could have chosen to buy motorcycles. However, since the late 1990s, hundreds of cities in China have launched an aggressive campaign to ban motorcycles, citing environmental pollution and frequent traffic accidents. Electric bikes have entered the market and became the most popular form of transportation for low and middle income people, according to the Chinese government media. China owns nearly 300 million e-bikes in 2019, ranking first in the world. At the same time, due to a lack of government regulation, electric bike manufacturers are producing and selling electric vehicles with speeds as high as 30 to 40 kilometers per hour, far exceeding the national standard of 20 kilometers per hour. On the other hand, local governments are reluctant to allocate bike lanes to the huge number of e-bikes, citing road resource constraints. E-bike owners are also not required to receive safety education, take driving tests, buy compulsory insurance, and register their vehicles. The oversized e-bike owners are nominally driving non-motorized vehicles, but they are actually driving in non-motorized lanes at the speed of motorized vehicles, which causes a large number of traffic accidents each year. Yet most local governments don't reflect on their level of urban management and neither take the trouble to improve public transportation nor consider dividing clear rights of way for e-bikes or educate e-bike owners on safety. After years of ignoring the problem, people's private property was forcibly confiscated, or electric vehicles were forcibly impounded because of a regulation. The officials choose to use a lazy and aggressive management approach to deal with the problems that arise. Under such circumstances, the desperate people have no choice but to rise up against the tyranny on their own. A participant in the protest said, "We are going to the government to get back our cars, go to work, make business, go out and do errands. We are not making trouble. We are people. The government should give us ordinary people's right to live." The government does whatever it wants. It doesn't care if the people live or die. The government is so unreasonable to us. So are motorcycles and e-bikes really so unsafe that they have to be banned altogether? Let's take a look at China's neighbor Taiwan, with more than 15 million e-bikes, including moped, registered in 2016, and an average of one e-bike for every 1.5 people. Taiwan city traffic remains orderly by large. In Taiwan's early days, e-bike caused traffic chaos, such as traffic jams, inconvenient parking, and frequent accidents. However, instead of banning them, Taiwan's Ministry of Transportation and Communications has continued to gather public opinion and formulate management measures according to local conditions. First of all, it has strengthened risk awareness education for drivers and conducted a rigorous driver's license test. Secondly, the Ministry of Transportation has promoted a diversion program for cars and e-bikes by setting up special or priority lanes for e-bikes to alleviate traffic conflicts that occur when both kinds of vehicles change lanes, all with remarkable results. For example, New Taipei City, a city with tight road resources, began piloting a series of diversion strategies for cars and e-bikes in 2007, and pioneered the practice of painting e-bike lanes and priority lanes brick red. In 2010, the Taipei Transportation Bureau analyzed in the Taiwan Journal of Transportation that since the diversion of cars and e-bikes on New Taipei Circular River Expressway. The number of e-bike-related deaths dropped from 24 in 2006 to 11 in 2007, and only two in 2008. People can't help but realize that if only the government were to do its duty and truly care about the public, it could regulate widespread traffic problems with no real issues. Thank you for tuning in today's episode. If you enjoyed our content and would like to keep up with other news and topics we discuss. Please like and subscribe. See you next time.